What's going on? It's your boy Tunnelvision, back for another video. Hey, people wonder, man. People be people people be confused. Like, yo, what are these dudes doing, man? Like, what the f is this? If we can get these certain fights, and you can work with these other promoters, and you can work with these other networks when it comes to these these certain fights, then why can't you just do it? Why aren't you just doing it with all of them? You know what I'm saying? At one minute, you know, we're thinking, oh, what's it called? There's a some kind of war thing going on, and they're trying to destroy PBC. So, you know, when they don't do certain, let's say, fights with certain promoters, okay, we understand it. But then they end up doing other fights with these other networks or these other promoters. So what the hell's going on? You know, keep it simple. Like, I've heard the words, like, keep it simple. Either work with them or don't work with them. And it's, in business, no, that's not necessarily a good idea. That's not a good idea. And people, and people are confused sometimes and wondering what the hell's going on. I hear people say, like, what the? So what, what are they doing? You know what I mean? And the thing is that you're confused. You don't know what they're doing because they're playing chess. They're playing a long game when it comes to this boxing thing, when it comes to this business thing. You know? What you're basically asking them when you say that is simplify it for me. Play checkers. Simplified. I want to know it. I want everything simplified so I know exactly what's going on. And obviously, if you know exactly what's going on, the other people also know exactly what's going on. And Al Heyman is a genius. We all know that. And we've seen we've seen this through the you know, he's been doing this for decades when it comes to music and other things. When it's come to boxing, we, we know that this is what he's been doing for a while now. You know, when he came up with PBC. When he was signing up all these fighters, they're like, yo, he signed up 150 fighters, 200 fighters. And people from HBO and all these other execs was like, other promoters were like, what the hell is he going to do? Where is he going to put all these fighters? Like, this is the dumbest thing. Like, why are you signing up 200 fighters? What the hell are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know what I mean? That's the question they used to ask. And all of a sudden, PBC, what's it called, is formed. Boom. $500 million deal, investment deal he has set up. And he has, and what did he start to do? And he has deals with ESPN, Bounce, BET, uh, Showtime, Fox, I mean, for, I mean Fox, Fox Sports, NBC, CBS. He makes deals with all these networks, right? Where a lot of them, he has to buy time slots. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them, he had to buy time slots. I think Spike, he did, and Spike was actually putting out a little bit of money. But then they ended up wanting to have them exclusive and they weren't putting up the money that was that was needed and what was necessary. But that's what they did. And then boom, 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 they started, you know, buying up the time slots, putting the shows on. And what people would say, it's not gonna work. How's this gonna work? <laughs> it's they're laughing at them. Like you're over here spending five, 10, 15 million in some slots, especially like them big boy slots, the NBC, those Fox slots, like twenty million dollars for those slots in order to put on boxing events. You know, and actually, and then, and people are like, yo, they're going to go bankrupt. They're not making any money. They're going to go bankrupt. They, that's, how, how many years have we been hearing that? That they're going to go bankrupt. They're going to go bankrupt. They're going to go bankrupt. And then they kind of slowed down. It was a part of, uh, it was a part of the year where they had slowed down. And then the question was like, yo, they're done. This is it. They only have a couple of weeks to go and it's over for them. And what did they do? Bam. They hit up with the big huge schedule. You know, with the font, the picture you're going to see when it, on this video, when you, when you click on this video, that's that's when they made the announcement. They brought all their champions and they had this big, huge, what's it called, schedule for the entire year. For fights that were on regular uh, networks and then also that were on Showtime. And they just destroyed the game with it. it was so much for them being bang going bankrupt. And then people were like, they're not going to be able to do this forever. You're not going to be able to continue buying time slots. They crunched things down to only a couple of a couple of uh, networks. Then after that, bam, big Fox deal comes up. Almost $400 million invested. And he extended the deal and gave him even more money. Showtime giving $60 million a piece. And they keep just doing their thing. And they keep getting progressing and getting better and better and better. So they know what they're doing. Even when you're sitting there and, and you're like, what are they doing? What are they doing? When people are confused, long game, they know what they're doing. The way they moved Earl Spence, people were wondering, like, yo, Earl Spence is not getting these fights. These guys on PBC aren't fights. He's on PBC and they're not fighting him. They built him up. They turned him into a superstar to when these guys are like, damn, yeah, I want to fight him now. I want to fight him because there's so much money involved in it. You know, Dante Wilder, same thing. How they kept investing in him, 
building him up to the point where now, psh, think about it. Less than a year, less than a year ago, people were seeing laughing at Dante Wilder for turning down seven million dollars to fight Dillian White in the UK. They were laughing at him for that. Now you can't get a, you can't get a, you can't get Dante Wilder to pick up the phone unless you, unless you're talking twenty million and up. So they know what they're doing, you know. And the reason, when let's get back to what we're talking about, though, the reasons they still work with these people is because they still, number one, when it comes to your lower tier fighters, if they want you, a, a, what's it called, a, a lower tier fighter to go, let's say on the zone, or let's say they want a lower tier fighter to go on, on ESPN to fight, let's say a Terrence Crawford. Like there was a time when uh, Diaz fought Crawford, Molina fought Crawford. Um, these are all PBC fighters, you know. It's simple. You know, with a lower tier fighter like that, you might not necessarily be looking and worrying about the TV rights. You might not be worrying about the gate. You might not be worrying about concessions. It might be all about them just getting a flat fee, them getting their check, them going out there, fighting, they're done. It's easy breezy. You know, give them 500, 600, 700, 800 thousand dollars. They're taking their check and they understand that's what I'm getting. But when it comes to their bigger fighters, when it comes to like a Terrence Crawford, I mean like a Sean Porter or a Danny Garcia and Earl Spence, that becomes different because then all those things become come into play, like the concessions, like the gate, like the what's it called, like the TV rights. And these are things that they might not want to give up the upfront guaranteed fee. Danny Garcia a Danny Garcia, even a Sean Porter uh, or a, a Keith Thurman. They're not going over there to, to what's it called to ESPN for less than seven million dollars guaranteed. They're not, and they're not going to do it because they can get that right where they are. They can get that. They're not going to go there for no two million or three million dollars. And then also, do you want to have to deal? Even if you were able to set up a deal, do you want to deal with these people, where top prank is the one collecting this money, and then they have to siphon it out to you, and then them not siphon it out to you? Because Bob Aram and Top Rank will do that. Then you got to go to court for five, six, seven years in order to get the money that's owed to you. Do you want to go through all that? You might be like, no, nah, I'm good with that. I'm not, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. You know, but certain fights, yes, it does work. You know what I'm saying? It does work. So they're going to do that. Number two, you don't want to work exclusively with, with one person. Because if you work exclusively with one person, then when it comes time to negotiate, you have no leverage. Kind of like Terrence Crawford, he went straight to ESPN and, and, and Top Rank and he negotiated with them and he just came up with a deal with, with from ESPN. He didn't leverage anything. He didn't go to the zone and get a deal and get an offer. He didn't go to PBC Fox and get an offer where then he could bring it back to them and be like, yo, I understand this is what y'all offer me, but this is the packages and the deals that I'm looking at right now. This is the package that I'm looking like now, right, right now. Even when Floyd Mayweather signed a deal with Showtime, he talked with both Showtime and he was talking with HBO at the same time. And he leveraged those two deals and came up with the Showtime ended up coming, you know, coming through and saying, yeah, we're going to give you this. And he ended up going with them. And then HBO last week was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. OK, we'll give you what you want. But he was like, "Now nah, I'm good. He's, you know, I'm good. And he ended up going to Showtime. That's what he ended up doing because he leveraged it. So when your deal with Fox is done, you don't want to just be working with Fox because then you're just the Fox is just negotiating with themselves. Like that's it, you know. But if you have a working, if you still have a working relationship with these other people, then hey, maybe you'll be in, in a, you'll be in a space where later on they'll want to do a deal with you. Plus, depending also on who's the management that's in there now, might not want to give you everything that you want. But when new people come in there, they might be willing to give you the deals that you want. And then so then later on, you can, uh, what's it called, do business with them and make some kind of deal with them. So, yes, they're still going to be selective in what they do. You know, uh, uh, Dante Wilder, Tyson Fury, what's good deal them working together in that particular situation. They thought it was a good deal because you notice ESPN and top ranking them. They're not spending money on fighters like that right now. And they're trying to find places like, you know, overseas or whatever that or put just putting them with other people like sending Ramirez to the zone, sending um, sending uh, Lomachenko to work with um, Eddie Hearn, with, where other people are putting the money up because they put a boatload of money on the side. They, take, they took a huge budget portion of that budget to put into this Wilder Fury fight. 
So why? So they're paying. A, they're putting a, a lot of eggs in this one huge basket and hoping to make some bread off it. And whether they do or not, Wilder's good. He's still going to make his bread. Tyson Fury is still going to make their bread as well. But in that particular situation, they both saw that okay, this is something that could work for both of us. So it's not gonna. It's not gonna ever be cut and dry. It's never going to be like that. It's, it's stupid to have it be cut and dry. It can't be like that. It's just not logical when it comes to business. And then another thing also is that you want to still learn and educate yourself with the people who work with these organizations and how these organizations work. You know, keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Anybody ever heard of that before? So you want to know who you're dealing with. You want to know. And the only way you can do that is, is by working with them here and there. You can't just close yourself to them because if you do that then you're not going to know what's going on over there you're not but if you're working with them then you will know and you will know the people that are there there are a lot of people that are working with pbc right now that came from hbo a lot of them they siphoned up a lot of talent from hbo that right now that uh, what's it called stop working with hbo and working with pbc bringing it to the level of success that they have right now a lot of people that work with them with their UK branch. There's a lot of people that used to work with Eddie Hearn that are working with PBC. Because when you're working with these people, they're, they're also seeing how you operate. They're also seeing how things go when it comes to your organization. They might be disgruntled in where they work at. They might not be happy where they work at. And they might be talented people that you can put into your, your organization that can help you progress, prosper, and get bigger and stronger. So they also understand that. They understand that. So they utilize that to their advantage. And they've been doing this for years. <laughs> they've been doing this for, I mean, for years. You know, so they're not, they're not idiotic and they're not stupid when it comes to that. So it's never going to be cut and dry. It's never going to be cut and dry. And especially when it's come to a man like Al Heyman, I've always said, even if I don't understand what's going on, I know he knows what the F he's doing because he showed us in the past that he knows what the F he's doing. And his brand keeps on progressing, his brand keeps getting stronger, and it keeps getting bigger. And nothing can stop it. Nothing is stopping it. And I know people say, oh, you're being a PVC hype boy, blah, blah, blah. It's not about that. It's just about looking at business and seeing how it's running, who's being successful and who's not. That's it. When um, before like the internet and social media came along, Bob Aram's way of things went good. It worked for him. I didn't like the, how grimy he was when it came to his fighters and how he was playing them. But it worked. You know, he could do things the way he was doing it. But when social media came along and all these other platforms came along, he couldn't just go to a newspaper or a person doing an article here and there or because that's not what people look at. People go to social media. People go to YouTube. People can find other. He has people say one thing. There are other people to contradict that or to combat that now. So a lot of things and a lot of ways they were able to push things. They can't do it anymore. When Don King was running things, he was a grimy dude. He used to play his fighters, man, when it came to that bread. He used to play them, take all their money. Tyson, $32 million is fight. That's his purse. Goes home with $3 million. They used to, he used to play him like crazy. You know, I didn't like the way he was doing things, but things worked. So I wouldn't have been able to sit there and say, oh, oh he doesn't know what he's doing. I wouldn't have been able to say it. So just the reality of the situation right now is that, yes, this group right here, they know what they're doing. This group right now, right now is being very successful. Anthony Joshua, his fight worldwide on the zone does 1.8 million views. And they're pumping their chest up like that's a big thing. So the show, the programming from, from Dante Wilder was doing 2.4, 2.5 million. 1.8 million is like not a big deal when it comes to PBC. They do 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2.2, 2 million views, 2.4 million views. In the United States alone, not all because Fox, all these channels, they they also have worldwide things where, you know, where they, what's it called? People pay for rights to show their to show their events worldwide. They don't put those numbers in. They don't talk about those numbers. They just talk about the U.S. numbers. That's it. You know? Because they could do the same thing. They could do the exact same thing. So just remember, when it comes to what they're doing, it's not going to be simplified. It's not going to be simple. And it's not going to be, It's not because it's that's what the other guys are doing. Because if you notice, we're able to cipher what these guys are doing and explain exactly why it's not going to work. Very simple, because they're playing checkers. With PBC, sometimes it's confusing 
But then whenever they hit some people on top of their head, it's always like, oh, damn, okay. They hit people on top of their head, it's like, oh, okay. And they keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And by the time people figure things out all the time, it's always too late. It's always too late. So our Skazy, whatever his name is, you know what I'm saying? He's in the car. He's driving off. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is jumping out the detective, the, the, the police station, looking outside, looking around, trying to find a car. He's gone. Like, subscribe, share. I'm out.